The following organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series. Oh, that looks good. Hey, so say you want to belong to a team sport. You know, be part of something bigger, make new friends, and have fun. But your parents are just not into contact sports. Possible injury. Or maybe athletics just aren't your thing. So here's the deal. Whether you're a boy, a girl, a jock or not, you can join or form one of the hottest trends in teen oh, sports yeah. spreading throughout the country. Hmm, any guesses? Here's a hint. What involves the outdoors, water, hand-eye coordination, aquatic biology, and more fun than you should be allowed to have in a teen sport? Well, don't just sit there. Come join us. Let's find out. Are you ready? Better put your life jacket on, cuz. We're going bass fishing. What better way to learn how to form your high school fishing team than to go with someone who's already done it? Not only has he already made his own team, but he also went on to become bass fishing champion of the state. Hey, uh, it's kind of windy. You think we'll catch anything? Oh, yeah. It's so windy out in the lake. What are we going to do? I think we're just going to have to stay in this bay here. There's some duckweed up here, and there should be some largemouth underneath it. You know, I really appreciate you taking us out, but it's kind of late in the season. I don't know if we're going to really catch that much. Well, the good news is, when you're on a fishing team, you learn how to catch fish year-round in all types of weather. In the fall is one of the best times to catch one of the biggest fish of your life. How could fall be good? I mean, it's starting to get cold. Well, think of fish as having to go into hibernation. All winter long, they have to deal with cold weather, and up north, even ice over their heads. They have to feed up so they're ready for the cold winter. Anytime we go fishing, there's two things we need. I see you guys have life jackets on, but do you have fishing licenses? Of course we do. It's the right thing to do. And the ethical thing to do. Well, awesome, then let's go fishing. So we want to form our own bass fishing club, but, well. There's so many challenges. Where do we even start? The first thing I did was talk to a school administrator, and then we would talk to the school board, and the school board had to approve it as a school club. Once that happened, we opened the opportunity to everyone in the school, and we had lots of other students join. Normally, at this time of year, guys, you wouldn't fish the shallow spot. Right now, the bass will face shore and they'll push minnows and bait up to shore and pin them against the bank. So when you throw your bait up right next to shore, it's just like a minnow that's getting scared up there and then they'll run up and that's when they eat it. You mean to tell me that there's fish right under that duckweed? That doesn't make sense to me. The duckweed creates a little canopy over the top of the fish and protects them, but now it's actually holding the heat and protecting them from the cold. Wow, belonging to a bass club is pretty great. I've learned about 20 new things. Now all I need is a bass. Oh, oh I think I got one. Get him out of the weeds. Ah. I'll grab the net. Oh, this will be my ticket into the bass fishing team. Oh, he's got weeds on him. Oh. oh, look at all the weeds in there. There is a fish down in there. Look at that. Wow. Oh. Nice fish. That's my ticket into the bass fishing club. For sure. <laughs> I'd say so. This is what bass fishing is all about. Now let's see if you can go catch one. 
Let's let them go, right? Yeah, we can catch some more, and that way we can catch them next time we come out. Thank you, girl. There she goes. Woo! Woo! <laughs> You know, I think a bass fishing club could really work. I mean, think about it. We've got hundreds of kids in our high school, right? But only a few dozen can play on the football and baseball teams. But with a bass fishing club, hey, anyone can join. Uh, still seems like a lot of work to me. Well, the good news is you're not the first person to ever try and start a team. Someone created on highschoolfishing.org a step-by-step -step process that tells you how you can create it. It's super simple. Well, that seems pretty helpful. In fact, it's so easy that there's over 1,500 bass fishing clubs. If your high school already has a club, you can just join it. And if not, well then, you could start one too. Hey Cedric, when you're working the frog, you want to twitch your rod tip like this and it makes the frog bob. And the duckweed is so thick that if you just reeled it, the fish wouldn't be able to tell it's on top, but when you bob it, it digs in, then the fish can feel the frog on the surface on their lateral line. Now that we know the whys as to how to start or join a bass fishing club, next, we need to code the hows so we can all belong to one. All right, we'll admit, the other day didn't work out too well. It was so rough, we couldn't even get out on the big lake. But a real bass angler is determined. So that's why we're back and we're going to catch some monster bass. And learn how to form your own high school fishing team. So zip up that life jacket, because we're going bass fishing. How come we turned around, Harmon? Well, I was looking on the side imaging, which is right here, and it looks out to 100 feet to each side, and I saw that, it looked like a school of fish. So I want to drive back over and just see, and maybe we'll stop here instead. Yeah, those are all fish. Exactly, what did you see on that sonar? Well, when we were driving over, I saw it was either rocks or fish. And when I turned around, I saw they were all fish. I'm guessing they're either smallmouth or walleye. We'll just have to see. Oh, come on, fish. I thought we would have had one by now. Weather affects everything in the outdoors, and unfortunately, you just can't control it. We had snow the other night, and now it's going to be 60 degrees today. So the fish are just a little confused because the weather's changing so fast. Hey, when I caught my bass, we were closer to shore. Don't you think we're a little far out? When we went out last time, the water temperature was 60 degrees, and it's dropped a lot since then, so the fish have to get ready for winter and move deeper. The surface water is the first water to get affected by the change in temperature. So the warmer water from the summer is still down below, and the colder water is up top. And that's why the coldest water in the winter is obviously the top that freezes, but if the fish move deeper, they can find the warmest water near the bottom. Well, that makes sense. If I were a fish, I'd go warmer too. Fish just jumped right behind the boat. I just had one, I think. <laughs> oh, I think I got one. Oh, I got one. Oh. Get it, get it, get it. It's a smallmouth. Oh. That's got to be a world record size, right? <laughs> That's a nice one. Now, if we were in a tournament, that would be a nice first fish. Oh, look at that. Wow. Jeez, 
is huge. Do you think he wanted to eat that? Definitely. I've never seen such a big fish before. If you were in a bass tournament, that's how you'd want to start it off. Whoa. Oh. So is this a largemouth or a smallmouth? This is a smallmouth bass. You can tell the coloration is more of a brown or bronze color. And of course, the obvious one, the mouth, because the back of the jaw doesn't extend past the back of the eyeball. On a large mouth, the back of the jaw will always be back here, past the eye. But on a small mouth, it's always up on front or in the middle. Wow. Oh yeah, and I think on a small mouth, the stripes go up and down. Whereas on a large mouth, there's only one solid stripe. Yeah, on a large mouth on the side, you'd see a black stripe that goes right down the back, and it's their lateral line, and that helps them feel what's in the water. Do smallmouths also have a lateral line? Yes, it's a little bit harder to see, but if you look right there, there's a little bit of a darker line that goes down, and that is their lateral line, and it does the same thing as a largemouth. All right, let's put this fish back so someone else can catch it someday, maybe even us. Uh, hopefully me. Harmon, how did you catch that last fish? Well, I caught it on the tube, Cedric, and I was just dragging it as slow as I could, sideways, and then once you feel your tube get caught up in the grass, you want to rip it free, and you're actually snapping the weeds in half. You're ripping them in half. If you look on the side of the boat, they're all floating up, and that's because when I snap it, they all came undone, and once you snap it, the fish will react, and that's when they eat it. Action, reaction. Let's catch a fish. Hey, I think I think I got one. Oh, never mind. <laughs> That was the weirdest thing I think I've ever experienced in my life. That did not feel like a weed. What the heck? <laughs> nice weed bass, Cedric. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was a strange, I've never experienced anything like that in my life. That felt exactly like a fish. That was so weird. That's another reason you better join the club. <laughs> I'll grab the oh. net. Whoa! Hurry! Oh. He's off. That happens sometimes. Uh, said I don't think you're gonna make it into the bath club, buddy. Oh man, he was mine. <laughs> he was right there. What are we trying next, Captain? Well, we'll try something moving. We'll try a spinner bait. And I'm thinking this one. Why such a light color? Well, the water is super clear here, so I want something that's a little bit translucent so it looks more natural in the water. What makes a good spinner bait? The good spinner bait to me means it has a good hook in it, a good sharp, strong hook and good blades that are flashy, and also the swivel here has to be nice and smooth so the blade spins freely. Hey, 
Guys, I got one. I got one. Oh, nice work. Here, I'll grab hurry, the net. Hurry, hurry, get hurry. the net, get the net. Oh, bring him in, bring him in. What kind of fish oh. is that? It's a largemouth. <sighs> Whoa! Look at that. Nice that is job. proof that I should be in the bass club. Good job, Cedric. <laughs> That's a pretty one. Thanks. You can see the black line we were talking about before. Oh, yeah. And then his lateral line right there. <laughs> and also here, when you close its mouth, here, I got him. When you close his mouth, you can see his jaw goes past the back of his eye. And that's how you know it's large mouth. Oh, yeah. As well as the green tint instead of the brown before with the small mouth. <laughs> Good job, Cedric. Thanks, Haley. All right, buddy, I guess I'll see you next year. But make sure you grow bigger. Let's catch some more. Besides learning a lot about bass fishing, we also learned a lot about forming a bass fishing club. Come on, it can't all be fun. What are some of the challenges you face? Well, one of the biggest challenges of a bass fishing team is if you want to have a team jersey, is finding the sponsors to put on it. For us, we had to go around town and ask different local tackle stores and other local shops if they wanted to sponsor us, and then we used that money to buy everyone a jersey. You know, I know a great marina that might do it. That's another great idea. I only have one other friend who knows how to fish. How do I get others to join? Well, you'd be shocked once you start a team how many kids will come out and actually join. There's a lot of kids that go fishing, but not many that talk about it. Hey, I have an idea. We can put it in the daily announcements. That way, everyone will hear. And once we all get together, we can have meetings, and they can bring more friends. Oh, I think I got one. So you guys, when it comes to high school sports, would you rather be playing football or volleyball or fishing out here? I'd rather be out here. And unlike the football team, me and my girlfriends can all join. And not only that, bass fishing also has a low stress to high fun factor compared to other team sports. Plus, unlike a lot of clubs, bass fishing develops life skills that will benefit you the rest of your life. Here's one you didn't think about. It gets kids off the couch, away from computer games, and into the outdoors. If you think about it, bass fishing clubs can teach you something that no other club can, and that's environmental awareness. And as a bonus, you get to learn how to tie some pretty cool knots. So why a bass fishing club? Why not a bluegill or a trout fishing club? Well, bass are definitely the most popular tournament fish out there. Um, there are bluegill tournaments and muskie tournaments and every fish you can think of, but bass, there's lots of lakes that have a lot of good numbers of them, and they're all over the place. They're down south, they're out west, they're out east, they're everywhere. They're up in Canada, they're in Mexico, they're all over the place, and that allows people from all over the world to get together and fish for one species. So what you're saying is, if you can find a pretty big body of water, you can catch a bass? The odds are good. Activities director. Oh, principal, here it is. You know, if I want to convince my principal to start a bass fishing club, I thought I'd talk to Harmon's principal first to get some advice. You know, I really want to get a bass fishing club started, but I don't know how I'm going to pitch it to my principal. Well, you want to talk to your principal about 
students getting involved in the outdoors and, and conserving the resources that we have. Anytime students are involved in activities, principals tend to like that. What kind of work is involved with setting it up? The first thing you want to do is find an advisor, somebody that is either a part of the school or maybe a parent. And then you want to approach the principal and eventually the school board with the idea of how this is going to be organized. How am I going to convince my principal that this is a worthy club and not just all of us going fishing? Well, you're going to want to come to your principal with a group of students, both boys and girls, that want to go fishing. And I think there's always power in numbers. So when you let your principal know that it's something that you have a wide range and, and some numbers behind you, I think they'll be more open to the idea. How do I also pitch them that this is a good thing for academics and GPA? Well, because it's a club, your school board and your high school are probably covered under their academic code. So the students that are going to be on the fishing team are going to have to keep a certain GPA in order to be able to do that. Man, this is great advice. Is there anything else I should know? Well, the more you get into it year after year, you're going to want to get some sponsors that are going to help to cover some costs. Most local companies will be all on board for that because they're going to see the interest and the excitement that the students have. Any final advice I can tell my principal to get them to sign on? I think just go to your principal with some excitement. Well, I got a lot of that. Thanks so much for all this advice. I can't wait to pitch it to my principal. You're welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Bottom line is, is your administrator needs to be assured that the program is all about promoting education through fishing. You'll learn all kinds of pitch points at highschoolfishing.org. They'll even give you quizzes and do online testing. That way, you get affiliated with one of the national organizations. With an easy step-by-step -step plan, forming a bass fishing club is going to be so simple. I'm going to catch so many bass. Uh, not so fast, bass boy. I think fishing tournaments come with a lot of challenges. Right, Harmon? Yes, there is a lot to tournament bass fishing. Like what? Well, before you go to a tournament, you normally want to do research so you know what you're going to do when you get there or pre-fish, one of the two. But also, you have to find a way to catch the five biggest fish you can, because you can only weigh in five fish. That's your limit. And then, of course, you just need to be ready. Have your life jackets, fishing licenses, all that stuff. Oh, so you can just put them in the live well and replace smaller ones with bigger ones? Yes, it depends from state to state, and even lake to lake, so you always want to check before you go. But in most places, you are allowed to call, which means that you take a smaller fish out of the live well, let it go, and put in a bigger fish that you just caught. Aw, I bet it makes that little guy feel better. So I suppose when I win my first tournament, I could get maybe one of these boats or a bunch of cash. Well, not all the time. In most high school tournaments when you win, they give you physical prizes like rods or baits. But then if you win a, a state tournament or an open tournament, then you qualify for nationals. And everyone can fish the world finals. And at those two tournaments, they give away millions of dollars in scholarships. And the companies give out tons and tons of product. Money and scholarships? Sign me up! Um, I think you first have to catch a fish, Haley. What's the weirdest fish you've ever caught in a tournament? The weirdest fish I've ever caught was probably a dogfish. What in the world is a dogfish? A dogfish is like a mixture of a bullhead, a muskie, and hmm, maybe a bass. They fight really good. They go crazy and always jump out of the water, even more than a bass does. OK, but really, how can a bass fishing club make you better academically? Well, because a bass fishing club's a school sport, you have to meet certain GPA standards, and your grade point average has to be good every couple weeks. And if it's not good enough, then you can't fish in the next tournament. So what you're saying is that I got to pay attention in math class? That's oh, right. God. You have to do good in math in order to fish. So what's so special about this spot, Harmon? Well, this whole bank, as far as you can see in both directions, is exactly the same. And then right here is there's a little p underwater point that comes out and a weed bed on top. And it's just an ambush point 
for fish like largemouth and other game fish to eat prey, like minnows. But you wouldn't know that just looking at the surface. I can use my electronics to see what's underneath the water, what I can't visually see with my eyes. I have down imaging, which shows me what's right beneath the trolling motor, and then side imaging, which shows me what's 100 feet to the right and 100 feet to the left. I can see rocks, weeds, and even fish. Now this is a bass. So see, even you can become part of your high school fishing team without even breaking a sweat while having a blast in the great outdoors. We've shown you how. Now it's up to you and your buddies. For support on making your own bass fishing team, visit these websites. And who knows, maybe one day we'll even be on the same college team together as so we cast our way into the outdoors. Let's say we uh, let this guy go, huh? Good idea. Organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series.